All right, let's do a text editing window where you can bring in a body of text, edit it, and then save the text. It's one thing that people like to do, I guess. Um, let's see how it works, first of all. Now I've rearranged things. I've moved the images over to the left here. That was just changing the HOR parameter down in one of the buttons. Um, this is the new box here, and there's some text in it. The text was actually just um, grabbed from uh, the GTK online manual. And you see it's scrollable. It's kind of scrunched in there. It's also indented. You notice I've, I've set up the indent um, at the beginning of each paragraph. It's also... Um, it's got an, a margin it offset too, both left and right. Um, you don't have to have them, but they're there. All right, so there's text. If you modify the text, like um, if I go in here and uh, type test, you'll notice test entered in here, and you'll notice the save button came up, indicating that the text has been altered. Now, the save button could have been visible the whole time, but I decided uh, anytime you change the text that uh, the save button should be illuminated. And you noticed in the background here, uh, there was a message saying the text was changed. Every time you change the text, it's going to give that message. So that's the idea. Uh, so I can go in here and um, there's my deletes and I've removed it and so forth. And if I click save, it'll, uh, it won't actually save anything because I didn't read it in from any place. Uh, but when I click save, it'll actually show you the text. And it's one giant long. Well, it's not one giant long, but several of the lines are quite long. Uh, the text is printed out. Um, at that point, you would, in your real program, you would actually save the text or something like that. All right, so how do we do it? Well, it gets a little, um, little messy. First of all, we go up here to our to Glade. And the save button's the simple one. It's a, just a standard button. Um, doesn't do much of anything except on save text clicked. It's called save text. Okay. Um, it's turned off. The visibility is turned off at the beginning of the program. Um, so uh, that's why you don't see it initially. All right. Now here is where we have a bit of a... We First of all, on top, you'll notice right here on the left, I have a scroll window. And that's called scroll window. That's the ID. I don't actually do anything. I'm not attempting to pull anything from it. They do have signals, and uh, they have things you can do with scroll windows, including position, obviously. But the scroll window is the outermost container. Now, in the scroll window, I have a viewport. A viewport allows me to put text and other things, but it allows me to put um, text, in my case, into the scroll window. And the scroll window will respond. If I didn't have the scroll window, the viewport would take up as much space as it wanted. And it would kind of flood the thing. Um, so with the scroll window, it bumps against the scroll window, and the scroll window puts scroll bars on. Okay. Um, inside the viewport, what am I going to view? Well, I'm going to view text. So I have a text view. Now, these were all draggable. Um, I didn't point out up here, first of all, that the, um, the top one there was a scroll window. Um, it's someplace in here. Uh, I mean, containers. Well, there's viewport. Um, and uh, scroll window should be down here someplace if I can. There it is, scrolled window. Um, is that it? Yeah. Um, no, I've got it scroll, um, scrolled window. I called it scroll window. If I move this over a little bit, you'll see it is a scrolled window. Sorry. Um, so it's a scrolled window. Again, I've lost it, but it's in here someplace. I wish things, these things were alphabetic, but for some reason that escaped them. There it is, right next to it. That's why. So that's a scroll. there's the scrolled window. Uh, the viewport is... Um, is also a container. You saw the viewport there a moment ago. Uh, the text view is a display, as I recall. Text view, yeah, there's the text view. So the text view is a display entity. The other two are containers. All right, so viewport, we don't do anything. It's got a name. It's got signals. I'm not playing with them. Um, the other thing I play with is the text view. So the text view, um, actually, I don't have any of the signals up on it. Um, Text view is just, uh, I added spell check, but didn't do anything. I don't know how spell check is supposed to work. Oh, okay, here's what I changed, the margins. You notice the left and right margins are set to 5, uh, just for example. And the indent is set to 10. That's why you saw the indent um, being on each paragraph uh, starting a little bit further in. The wrap mode is set to Word. You can have you can set different wrap modes and so forth. Um, that's about it. Uh, 
as I, the spell check is still enabled, but I um, I don't know. I haven't seen I haven't seen that work. It's something I have not figured out how to uh, how to do. This mono space, which didn't actually do anything for me. Anyway, um, so we have the text view. All right, now what does it look like in code? All right, in code, and again we're into our all-purpose collection of widgets here. Um, there is the scroll window, which I don't actually use. There is the um, viewport, um, uh -oh, which I don't actually play with, and the text view, which I do actually p play with. Uh, there is the widget for the button called Save Text, and there is one we, uh, that was not declared in Glade. This is separate from Glade. This is a GDK text buffer. Uh, the text view will have a t text buffer in it, and I need to access the text buffer in order to get at the text. So that's one that was not part of Glade. So going down, the rest of them are kind of, I, I, I included them in the builder here. There's scroll window, viewport, um, text view, and save text. That's the button. But the uh, text buffer is not here. The text buffer is uh, not part of the Glade. Um, there's the text buffer up here. It's not part of the, uh, the Glade family, so it shouldn't be there. All right. Now, how do I set this up? Um, all right, here's the section of code just before I go into GTK main. Um, first of all, I get the text buffer. Text view is the window which is going to have text in it, okay? It has a buffer. I want to know who that buffer is. So I ask it, who is your buffer? And it returns to me a pointer to the, uh, to the buffer that is being used by that text view uh, window. All right, so I've got the address of the buffer. Um, this buffer, uh, any uh, this buffer has signals, but since the signals are not part of Glade, I've got to do manual connections to the signals, and I actually have in the background here um, uh, GTK text buffer. It's a GNOME uh, development um, widget thingy, and there's a million functions for text buffers. We, are, I mean, I'm not getting into them all. I don't know them all, but there's a million of them. You can get all sorts of things. Um, under signals, when I clicked on signal, these are the signals that occur in a text buffer. One of them is changed. That's the only one I really care about. One of them is changed. So let me get that off the screen. So that's how I connect to the... So for text buffer, if the signal changed is, is raised, I want to call the function on changed text, which is a function I wrote. And the name, you can make up any name you want, but you know, something like that is a good one. Um, so anytime the text buffer gets altered, there will be a signal uh, called changed, and I will go to the function on change text. And since this was not part of the dynamic set from Builder, I had to declare the function up here someplace. Where did I click? Here it is here. Void on change text. Uh, and I get, of course, the... Um, uh, the, the the address of the text buffer that's being changed, but I already know what that is anyway. Um, so you would have to pre-declare it. You didn't have to pre-declare all the other signal handlers because that was handled by the Glade mechanism. <coughs> okay, so where are we? Um, I was about to... Uh, so I got the text buffer. I've set up the signal, and now I want to put some text into um, the text buffer. So I went out and I grabbed a um, pile of text, and you can see it here. This is the text, uh, which I just copied from the GNOME um, book. It's someplace in the middle of it. And I and the new line, carry, the, the backslash here means it's all one continuous line. Um, but where I had periods, I put in backslash, backslash M. Those are new line characters. There's some more new line characters. I inserted these. So they would show up as paragraphs or, you know, new lines on the thing, and we'd get the indentation and so on. So that's one big, giant, long uh, string. And temp was declared. That was another thing that was declared at the top. Um, 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 okay, anytime one wants, wants to let me have uh, control. Um, I think I hit caps lock again. Uh, yeah, I did. Slash temp. Um, there it is. It was declared to be a 1024 character string. Um, and I just copy that in, which I do, which is uh, shorter than 1024. Always wise to check, but anyway. Okay, so that I just got a, a string. Now you could have read that in from a file, okay? Um, and normally that's probably what you would have done is read it from a file. But anyway, um, 
uh, once I've got it into temp, I can put it into the text buffer. And here's the function that puts it into the text buffer. There's text buffer. Um, technically, I'm, I'm recasting it as a, const, a pointer to um, constant character, gcar. Doesn't matter. If you just put temp, it would be fine. And um, the uh, and where it's putting it in, uh, if you put in a minus one, it puts it in at the beginning. Okay? That's the location of where to, uh, where to put it. Uh, so you know, let's let's go back and double. Um, so let me go uh, uh, get text bar set text. Let's go back to the beginning here. Go to the top. Um, find uh, set text. There it there it is there, and you can see. Um, no, excuse me, that's the length. I thought I was wrong on that. It's the length. Um, if you if you specify a minus one, it'll determine the length. It assumes it's null terminated, and it'll determine the length from the null. I thought I was wrong when I said that's the position. No, it's the uh, it's the length. Uh, sorry about that. Anyway, so the uh, the function is get uh, GTK text buffer set text, and uh, those are the parameters. You pass it the um, pass it a pointer to a buffer. You pass it a pointer to some text, and you pass it um, a length or minus one in the case of um, um, where it's null terminated. You don't have to use null terminated strings, but I did in this case. The string copied is a null terminated string. All right. Um, then I hide the button save text. The button save text is hidden, so you're not going to see it on the screen initially. All right, down at the bottom when we start playing with this stuff. Um, let's see. Um, there's not too much. There's basically here's on changed. Um, now on changed, uh, all it does is prints out a message saying the text is changed, and it shows save text. Uh, so the button will will appear. Uh, which means you've got to save the text. You could also put a um, a flag in here that before you exit, you check the flag and make sure they've saved the text. Um, that would be a global flag, but um, in my case here, all I did was turn on the um, the button, so the button visibility is is shown. Um, up here is the button on uh, save text. Here's the function for it. Okay, so now we've now we've clicked it and we're going to quote unquote save the text. All I'm going to do is just print it out. Here's the printout down here where I actually print out the text. But I, um, but how do I go about it? First of all, we have to have GTK text iters. Iter is a data type, begin and end, I'm declaring them. Um, and I declare a pointer to type, uh, type um, gcare, or, which is the same, of course, it's just an ordinary care, story, care pointer. But anyway, um, then I have, uh, I have two functions here. Um, I want to get the value. The iter is the is basically the pointer into the buffer. It's the pointer iterator. It's a pointer into the buffer, and I want to get I want to get the pointer into the buffer into the into the iter iterator called begin, um, which would be the beginning of the buffer. Zero zero is the beginning of the buffer. Um, begin. You have to pass the address of an iterator. So begin and end are iterators. Ampersand begin is the address of the iterator. And so I'm going to get back in begin the iterator for the start of the buffer, position zero. Uh, the other one is I'm passing the address of the other iterator, end, and I specify minus one, which means at the end. Minus one in this function means the, uh, it's actually one byte beyond, but anyway. Uh, so yes, we get the um, um, it's the uh, we get the two iterators for the beginning and the end. Now we have a function, which is uh, GTK text buffer get text. This is going to get the text out of the text buffer, obviously. And uh, notice I'm using casts here. You don't have the because these are all declared as widgets. They are uh, text buffers. Um, it is a text buffer, I should say. Uh, so the text buffer is here, um, and that's the thing I'm passing down. And I'm, there's the starting point, there's the ending point, and that final one is whether or not hidden characters should be shown. I said yes, or should be retrieved. It doesn't really apply here. It's more for things that involve um, characters that are in, in um, embedded in a graphics, apparently. But anyway, it, it, hidden characters will be returned. Um, okay, so what I do is I get a pointer called text, which is a pointer to the text in the text buffer, starting at the beginning, byte zero, all the, all the way through the end byte. Now, what do I do with that as I print out some dashed lines, new line? 
there's the text I'll print it out on the screen and there is the uh, uh, new line then I put some more dashes so you can see it actually occurring so that's how I did it all right let's um, um, let's go back and compile and um, run it you can see the situation I'm going to enlarge this a little bit here so that um, so that some of that stuff will um, so here it is, here's my text, and I will go down to the very end here, which is where it was anyway, and I'll start adding stuff. A line of A's, a line of B's, and you can see the other one um, is uh, indicating that seeing the uh, text is being changed. And the save uh, button came up. Uh, now when I click it, I'll see the contents of the, of, the, of the buffer, which are now ready to be saved on disk or something. There they are, and you see there's my A, B's, and C's down at the end. The dashes, of course, are just uh, decoration to mark this text off. There's the original, there's the, the text plus the part I added. So anything you add in here um, or delete, uh, you got all your editing keys, um, will show up uh, in, the, um, in the result when you, when you click save. Of course, if I say click save, I'll do it again because it didn't really save anything. I suppose when I click save, I should have I turned off the... Um, uh, it, it turned off the uh, the save button. Um, where's the uh, there's the save button? Um, and I'll go down there and I will um, after I've saved it, I'll turn off the save button. How's that? A hey, dynamic programming. Um, okay, so now I'm going down to the end here, and I'm going to um, okay. And now when I click save. It wrote it out here in the uh, in the background, and you notice the save button disappeared because it's been saved. That looks a little better. Okay, so there's a way to do editing uh, of text uh, on a screen, and uh, seems to work okay. A little complicated. It had involved some additional things, and feel free to look these things up. The um, the thing we're dealing with here is the G is the GTK text buffer. And the GTK text buffer is used by GTK text view. Uh, what else have I got here? Um, and there's the GTK iter. There's the um, set of functions for GTK iter. This is the set of functions for GTK text buffer. And this is the set of functions for GTK text view. View is, of course, the container, which contains a buffer, which is manipulated with, with the iterators. Um, isn't that fun? And ever, most of these will have signals, okay? And the signals down here, well, let me let me go back to the one that we actually used here, which was, um, uh, was that it? Yeah, okay. Um, uh, changed. That's the one. These are the signals that are, these are the ones you would put in the, um, in, in the callback. Uh, these are the names of the signals. If I click it here, you'll see it gives an it gives a, a an example void user function. That's the name you give it, whatever name you give it. It's going to re give you the text buffer uh, that's being used, and it's going to give you a pointer to user data, uh, which uh, uh, is something um, the user has set up when the handler was connected. In the in the connect uh, function, you can set up something to be passed. Uh, when the signal is um, is invoked, um, I didn't, so that's no, not. So you get a bunch of different signals, and these functions all have a tendency to look alike. It's user, it's void user function, um, and of course the pointer to the thing that's being manipulated, and some optional uh, additional material depending upon what it is that you're actually doing. All right.